<clears throat> well, finals week is over. I'm bright-eyed and bushy-tailed again. Welcome back, everyone, to the Fry Smiles Oral Health Network. I'm your host, Scott Fry, and we're continuing on with our post about coffees and staining of the teeth. Uh, and I'm sure all of you are probably under the assumption that adding milk to your coffee is going to reduce uh, the amount of staining that's going to occur in your teeth, mostly because you're adding a white liquid to a brown liquid. And while that's most of the, most of the time that's pretty much true, uh, that's not really how it works. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the science of it, so that way you can go ahead and select the right um, creamer for your coffee, so that way you get the most reduction in stain. And this is only really applying to uh, animal-based uh, types of creamers. This is not your almond milk, not your soy milk, not your rice milk, things like that. Uh, we're going to cover that in a future post. So, what's happening? You have uh, milk proteins that are in these creamers, and those milk proteins actually physically bind to the staining compounds. And they do a better job binding to those staining compounds when they're in a very fatty environment. So, that means that something like your half and half which is high in fat and has lots of milk proteins in it because it's milk, will reduce staining much better than something like your non-dairy fat-free creamer, which has a very, very small concentration of animal milk proteins in it to bind the staining compounds. And obviously, if you add more of these milks to your coffee, so the milk to coffee ratio is greater, you're also going to reduce staining more than you would say, you know, black coffee with just a little bit of creamer added. I hope that makes sense for everybody. I hope you enjoyed the post this week. Stay tuned next week for more of our staining and coffee posts. Take care, everyone.